So friends, now let me talk about the thermodynamic principles in metallurgy. It is very important to understand that is the thermodynamic study plays a very important role in metallurgy because this gives us an idea that which reducing agent should be used at what temperature we should use so that we could reduce a particular metal oxide. So based on that, let me give you certain information that is the extraction of metal from their oxides by using particular reducing agent can be predicted by some basic concepts of thermodynamics and that is what I am going to talk about. For example, in thermodynamics that is in chapter thermodynamics we have understood that as the spontaneity of a reaction can be predicted by the delta G value. That is suppose if the delta G value is more than zero that means suppose if delta G value is positive then those reactions are been considered to be non-spontaneous and suppose if delta G value is negative so in that case the reaction is considered to be spontaneous and when delta G has zero value so in that case we consider that the reaction is in equilibrium so based on this concept we can easily decide that what temperature or what are the different condition that a particular metal oxide needs so as to get reduced into a pure metal so based on that so let me give the formula for that that is we understand that is delta g is equals to delta h minus t delta s where delta g is nothing but gives free energy delta h is nothing but the change in enthalpy t is the temperature and delta s is nothing but the entropy but it is not the delta s which will decide whether the reaction is spontaneous or not in fact it is actually the delta g which will decide whether the reaction is spontaneous or not so based on this we have understood this concept very clearly in thermodynamics chapter but now we are applying this in metallurgy so what is the application of this let me talk about that so friends in this topic i'm going to talk about certain reactions and let us understand what are the different values that it could change that is suppose if i'm talking about delta g delta h or temperature so what happens when these two reagents they react with each other so talking about the first example that is a whenever a metal is combined with oxygen molecule so in this case the product that has been formed is two moles of metal oxide so in this case i have to balance the reaction so therefore two moles of metal suppose if it is reacted with the oxygen molecule and it will produce that is two moles of mo so in this case basically we have to also consider the physical state and in this case the metal is of solid oxygen is a gaseous molecule and even this metal oxide is basically a solid substance so during this reaction it has been found that is this kind of combustion reaction obviously whenever a metal is reacted with oxygen it is a combustion reaction so it has been found that is this kind of reaction is exothermic reaction so that's the reason that is the delta h will have a value which would be negative and in this case it is also been found that is the delta s value is also been found to be negative but we have understood the formula that is delta G is equals to delta H minus T delta S. So in that case, the delta G will be negative only if the temperature is low. So that means at low temperature, we could find that is the delta G value will be negative. And this delta G value will turn into positive if we increase the temperature. That means that at low temperature, metal can easily combine with oxygen so as to form metal oxide and thereby giving the delta G value to be negative. So that's the reason the formation of metal oxide is very much feasible if the temperature is low. So therefore, this is one of the conditions that I have mentioned about here and now let me discuss about the second condition. The second condition is suppose if you are considering carbon and suppose if carbon is reacted with a limited supply of uh, oxygen so in this case i have to balance it by when two moles of carbon is reacted with o2 so therefore it will form that is two moles of carbon monoxide so in this case let me elaborate those physical states so in this case carbon is of solid phase oxygen is of gaseous phase and in this case carbon monoxide which is also of gaseous phase so this kind of reaction is basically exothermic reaction because we are considering a combustion reaction so in this case delta h will have a negative value so which will clearly indicate it that this kind of reaction is exothermic reaction but in this case it has been found that is the delta s will be positive if you consider the number of moles of gaseous product that is two moles and in this case the number of moles of reactant are basically one mole so in that case we could get that is the delta s has a positive value and that's the reason that the t delta s this value will also be we could say it will be negative because if delta s is positive in fact and in fact this is the temperature so in this case the delta h which is found to be negative and in fact here also we could find that is the t delta s is negative so according to the formula that is delta g 
is equals to delta h minus t delta s so in this case the delta g value will be in fact negative with rise in temperature so that's the reason suppose if the temperature increases then even this value will turn into more negative value and thereby the delta g will also be turned to be more negative so in this case suppose if we compare delta h and t delta s so based on the formula the delta g will be negative and this is the second condition that i was talking about so now let me talk about the next one so the next condition is suppose if carbon is treated with oxygen so as to form that is carbon dioxide that is co2 so in this case let me introduce the phase of it that is carbon is of solid phase oxygen is of gaseous phase carbon dioxide is of gaseous phase so in this case even this is in a combustion reaction so that's the reason we could say that is the delta h it will have a negative value that means it is an exothermic reaction but if you talk about the number of moles of the gaseous product and the number of moles of the reactant so it has been found to be the same and that's the reason that the delta s is approximately we could say zero so based on that even the t delta s will have a value which is approximately zero thereby we can say that is the delta g the value of delta g will not change significantly if there is a change in temperature so thereby we can say such kind of reaction we can find there is no change in gibbs free energy that much and that's the reason that these are the three conditions that is what i have discussed about and based on this we could make a conclusion so therefore the conclusions are that is for formation of metal oxide the delta g naught increases with increase in temperature but for formation of that is carbon monoxide the delta g naught decreases with increase in temperature and for formation of carbon dioxide the delta g naught does not change significantly with rise in temperature or with change in temperature so therefore these are the three conclusions that we have depicted because of the thermodynamic study and this plays a very vital role in understanding which metal can form metal oxide and which metal can be reduced very much easily depending on the usage of the reducing agent so that's it this is what i want to discuss about thank you friends for watching this video i hope you have understood this topic very clearly and i hope i'll meet you next time till then don't forget to subscribe ikira channel thank you so much